when I was selected as a SUSO activist, and then um, before the implementation, I got to find out that um, I could have the opportunity to choose I, we were supposed to work with young people, but then I was given the opportunity to choose the kind of young people I would want to work with. And being that I'm already working with young girls, and there is this particular issue uh, or challenge that these young girls are facing that I have not been able to address. When I saw the, uh, when the SUSO program came up, I decided that I'm going to use the, the, the project as an opportunity, as, an, as um, an avenue to raise this issue and do something about it. For instance, most of them suffer from sexual exploitation. They are being abused, but they, they bottle up this feeling. They don't talk about it because they feel that um, it is not in their place to talk about it. Meanwhile, remember that I said that they are the ones suffering it. After being called to bar, I went to court one, one day to uh, for him another matter. And as I sat down and uh, waiting for my case to be called up, I saw a young man who was, let me say, my age, and he was in court, and the matter was called up, and he was sentenced to a term imprisonment for using and being in possession of marijuana. When I left court that, that um, afternoon, I decided that I was not going to sit down again and keep quiet over the issue of drug abuse because I saw firsthand how it quarantined a young person's life to prison. And only God knows what will become of that person if he's not afforded rehabilitation after he leaves the prison. The love and passion for education is dying. Even when I interact with young ones, some of them don't care about education. They just believe maybe it is calm. That's a very bad mindset. And I've come out to say, no, that is not it. Education is a funny thing in Nigeria. And um, back 2015, he built up to the uh, Jonathan uh, election, you know, he sold himself as a man who went to school without shoes. And I, I, I thought to myself, why, why, why did this have to sell? Jonathan wasn't the only man who went to school without shoes. There are a lot of such issues and beyond even. So I had to look into it. And while I was in the university, and I, I had to now, you know, get to work with young people to find out what is happening in the education sector. Why should I go to school and not be able to find a job? Having been in this space for the last uh, two, three years now, I've engaged schools, especially children, and one thing I've like, prioritized is um, advocating, uh, advocating for the inclusion of climate change as a school curriculum, where you engage students at all levels and all, all age uh, brackets to actively engage in climate education, teaching them about the environmental degradation, what they need to know, what the problems that is it entails and how they can be part of the solution. So the theme of my project is um, innovative program to increase the leadership skills and political confidence of 100 girls from Enugu South communities. So I'm working with 100 girls between the ages of 12 and 18. So um, girls that are in GSS1 to SS3. My social project uh, is looking to um, you know, strengthen youth participation in education service delivery in Enugu states. And that was how I began to take roots. You know, how do we get young people to go to school and effectively transition from school into a decent job for themselves? And I think that's the more uh, reason why we go to school. Not that we go to school and then we come back sit at home or become even a, a, um, a threat to the society. And we are here to do something very brief. We are here to speak up and stand out for academic excellence. And what do we do? Yes, we are here, we speak up against examination malpractice and we stand up for academic excellence. So basically, we started to choose 16 secondary schools in Nsuka here. So what do we do? We go about sensitizing their students on the need to shun examination malpractice and pursue academic excellence. The first day they came to our school, they introduced the uh, like the topic of eczema practice, which is not good for the students. What we decided to do with this um, project is to go into the rural community and begin to provide accurate and relevant information regarding drug abuse. Because what the project in intends to do is to help young people build resistance 
And for you to be able to help them build resistance, you need to understand what pushes a young person in the first place to begin to experiment with drugs. And so we began to conduct classroom sessions where we are dealing with these problems specifically and providing practical information to these young people how to deal with these root factors that lead them to drug abuse. We establish reading clubs in these schools just to see that the reading culture is revived and help these young ones. Also, these young ones also stay under our mentorship. We help them. Sometimes we also have counseling sections with them. Whatever it is that is making them not to see themselves as high flyers, we're making them to feel that they can't make it, they have dull brains. We try to help them and we try to coach them, we try to mentor them. When we come to some schools and we discover that there are no instructional materials, we buy and give them, we donate for free. And this has also aided their learning, their learning process, so that's just it. The program or the project is centered around helping young girls to build their leadership skills, to be able to speak for themselves. And then we had to come up with activities like um, um, helping them to become better public speakers, then also helping them to become civically engaged in their community. All of this, we, we, I, I have the intention of drawing them closer to their community, for them to understand that most of the things that goes on in their community is also their responsibility while they are taking care of themselves or while they are speaking up for themselves about the ills and things that are affecting them they should also be community conscious we also began to um, run online social media campaigns because we were in rural communities and we know that drug abuse is a national problem and so the social media campaign was aimed to reach out to a wider audience the third thing we did in the project was to, be, to, was to begin a radio program. We called it the Truth About Drug Abuse radio program. When we started the first uh, edition, it was as if uh, it was a strange thing that we, we were doing. But after the first episode, the, the second and, and the third, we began to see that actually this is a real problem. And the people that we, we hope to reach, which are parents and teachers, did not seem to have um, the right amount of information to lead these conversations with the young people around them. Part of the work that I'm doing with SUSO is to get young people to be a part of the process of development in education in their own communities. And when I engage them, I find that, oh, these guys are really you know, passionate even about these issues. Of course, starting off, we were able to um, um, take a community as a, a target community, um, and we had our entry uh, visit where we had to engage with the, um, the local authorities, the Tamiyan chairman, and all the other leaders in the community. We had to let them know what the project is about. This is us coming to um, help young people in your community to see what the issues are with education in your community and then see how um, they can be part of the solution. So, after that, we had a meeting, uh, a town hall meeting with um, the young people who are at the heart of these issues. During this uh, conversation, we found that, oh, these guys know so much about what these issues are, and it is easier for us to now engage them in the training and you know, um, let them have the skills that they need to be able to engage government. What do we do to bring this school, uh, the standard up, you know, to a very human level? My target audience are the children and youth. Yes, so first I started with uh, the recycling for agricultural waste into um, briquettes. Briquettes are alternative solutions to charcoal and firewood where I help the students understand the problem. Okay, there's something we call briquettes. So taking them through the theory section, I also took them through the primary, the hands-on training where they will see how these things are being done and how, and I encourage them to also step down this training in their various communities. The second project activity was uh, the recycling of uh, LDP kind of waste. That's the, it's a plastic waste, LDP, low density polyethylene, into um, interlocking tiles. Yes, it went on virtually and in person. A lot of them giving feedback on how those projects impacted their life. That's virtually. Then we went into the in person training. That's the hands on training where I engaged another school in the FCT around Karishi local government. Um, GSS Karishi, Karishi Government Secondary School, Karishi, I engaged students 
the whole, I, I took them through the whole theory process and uh, the practical section with them where they saw it um, vividly how they can actually recycle this plastic waste, the LDP kind of waste into interlocking tiles. And it was an interesting section because I, I think it's very important we engage children. After the interaction, a lot of them were like, they never knew something like this existed. They never knew you can actually convert pure water, such as they used to think it was waste. But now they know that plastic waste is actually fortune, it's money, it's gold to them. And I must say the project so far has been successful because the response I've had from the participants, those children, it has been awesome. I think there was a time I was in a school in Karachi and a student was even asking how much will it take him to establish something like this. So and I was trying to explain, okay, with crude equipment you can use so, so amount and if you want it to be industrial, you can use. So that has to show you that those children really have um, they, 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 they are really interested in what is happening and they are already seeing these challenges and want to become uh, change makers in their various ways. Yes, one of my major benefits was the impact uh, I was part of creating, uh, working as uh, an, active, an advocate as well as a partner to ex implementing some of this project made me a principal part of uh, its implementation and that was a major uh, benefit for me. Uh, seeing that young people are educated and empowered to identify problems and turn them into opportunities. Out of the 16 schools we earmarked to reach, we've been able to reach 10. So far so good. And um, by the grace of God, out of these 10, we've been able to reach over 3,000 students in them. And we, these are young ones, we, uh, females and males ranging from 13 to 19 years because how we got to know, we administer pre and post survey forms whenever we go for sensitizations, you will see some of their age there. Okay, so far so good, I want to say that um, it has been a great experience reaching out to several schools here within Insuka and um, personally I've learned so many things during our outreaches, uh, I've learned that so many youths need to hear um, some of the things we went to taught them, we went to teach them about. And so far so we've been able to establish five reading clubs in some of the schools we've sensitized. And not just that, currently we have over 300 students under our direct mentorship. Yes, we can say these ones, we are really mentoring them. And these ones are in our reading clubs that we've established. So personally, I feel that the outreach and our sensitization program had so much impact in the lives of so many of them. Some of them, they were not out to pursue excellence. Examination my practice was like something they eat and drink. But right now, we have students under our mentorship who have decided to denounce examination my practice and they're really doing well academically. And not just denouncing it personally, they've been able to also dissuade the minds of their friends to stop whatever form of examination my practice and take the academic seriously. The, this project actually ran for 11 months and um, I would say that it was very successful because I had impact stories not just from the beneficiaries, the girls, I also had impact stories from their teachers and their school authority. You know, explaining to me how they've noticed an increase in the, um, in, in self awareness and self um, co and self esteem of their um, students. So on behalf of my colleagues and I, I want to say a very big thank you to you, Auntie Liz, and Chuck for coming over you know, to enlighten us more on this issue of uh, stand up and speak out, especially as girls, and then choosing this topic. The first time I saw the project name, Speak Up, Stand Out, you know, at that point I didn't really understand what it meant until I went into the program and understood that Speak Up, Stand Out is actually all it takes for young people anywhere to be able to, you know, stand strong, um, be able to speak up for themselves and also contribute meaningfully to the betterment of their communities.